Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today, we're going to do something I've done a couple of times. We're going to go out mining. But in this situation, we're going to see what mining is like in the new Star Citizen 3.3.6 PU. Of course, we are at Lorville. And being that we're at Lorville, we are going to be taking off from one of the hangars, which I find to be quite amazing. And in this case, I think we're going to be going over to Hangar 4 because it's almost always 4. And yes, it is. The purpose of today's video is to give you an idea on how you can make some money inside of the PU today. Now, of course, that's going to be a short-lived amount of money because we're only going to be getting about 30 to 35 days of being able to use version 3.3.6 because on December 30th or thereabouts, we're scheduled to have 3.4 come out, which is going to bring in a whole host of other additions, fixes, and, well, you know, bugs. In the grand scheme of things, making money in the universe really does not matter right now because there's a reset every three months. But in order for us to test the game to the best of our abilities, we have to at least try. That way, CIG could continue to deliver on its promise of bringing us the best damn space simulator ever. So today I'm going to take out my prospector, and here we are at Lorville, of course. We already said that. And we're going to head to Ariel. I think Ariel is probably the hottest place I've ever been to in Star Citizen to date. It is a brisk 300 million degrees on its surface well at least it looks that way and you will see rather soon what that's like so let's light this candle and get off this planet and get headed out to ariel okay it's been about eight minutes i've been flying already we are high above the surface of hurston and we are going to make our way to ariel in about well just a few seconds See if we can get a nice look at this quantum jump here. And we're there. And there it is. Now, Ariel looks to be very hot. And when you get down to the service, it actually is. I don't have any recommendations on where to mine yet. But what I can tell you is that mining on Ariel has been very profitable for me over the last 24 hours. I had one run where I made 3,000, I had another run where I made 18,000, and I'm about ready to set out on another run after this video to try to double that now that I know what to mine. And that will be something that you'll have to watch till the end of the video to see. Anyway, I'm going to head to the nearest place that's still in the lit side of Ariel. And that should take us right through the debris field. That debris field actually looks like a giant space station that was blown up. I don't know the lore behind it. If you do, please post it in the comment section below. So I'm going to take the time to head us down to the surface now. And I'll be back in just a moment. It never fails that I'm a very picky miner. I always say the next rock, the next rock, the next rock. And I saved you all that pain today. I went around the planet for quite a while looking for different nodes to see what was in them. And I finally settled on a node that we're going to be coming up to in just a few moments. Mining in the game still has its problems. The biggest problem is the scanner does not allow you to mark any node that you might feel would be a good alternative if you don't find anything else meaning i can't just say hey computer remember this node and that's kind of a problem to me because with all the advanced technology available in star citizen today mining right now still being worked on doesn't allow you to see the rocks that you uncover or i should say see the nodes that you uncover with your scan after the scan is done the computer should have some kind of a way of telling you Here's the rocks that you found in the last scan. Here's the nodes that you found in the last scan, whatever it might be. And then you'll be able to go back to each one of them should you not find something else in the area. 
it would make it so much easier because I found quite a number of rocks that had 5% of this, 1% of that, and 5% of that, whatever the different resources are. And I couldn't find where I had located them after the fact. It was kind of, uh, kind of made me wonder, is CIG doing this on purpose for now, or is it just that this mechanic was thrown in to be worked on later? And that's what I think has really happened. The mechanic is here for us to play with now, but it's definitely going to get worked on, corrected, enhanced as time goes on. And this was one of the problems I had with this one particular node. It took forever to heat it up. Now, I had to think about this for just a few seconds. If I can't get this node to bust in any way, shape, or form, I might as well just move on to another one. And this was the node that I found the highest concentrations of the three elements in it. So let's move on to the rock I did find. After a while, I settled on this node. It didn't have nearly as much of any of the elements in it as the first one did. In fact, it probably had a little bit less of the most profitable mineral to mine. But it was the only node that I was able to get to crack on this day. The run I made after this, which was late last night, was actually much more profitable. And every node that I went to, I was actually able to fracture. So I think it might have to do with server load at this at this point in time. I'm wondering if object container streaming server side is going to help that or if there's some other kind of network fixes that have to be done to make that work. Now right now it's very hot on the planet and my mining laser just is not heating up the rock enough. I think these nodes are more they're, they're more resilient. They have more resistance to your mining laser, so it takes a little bit more time to crack. And I sit here, and then I start finding that I can move the laser up and down, back and forth, ever so slightly, and I'm going to get a little bit more heat on the node. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to heat the node up so I can actually get it to fracture. It's going to take some time. It's going to take us at least two to four minutes, depending on the node. And that's here on Ariel. I haven't tried this on Eta, and I haven't tried this on the other moons of the system yet. And I don't know if I'm going to. After the last run that I had to Ariel, I think Ariel is going to be my mining location for 3.3.6. And we're going to fracture this sucker in just a few moments. So at this point, we're actually at about the 40 minute mark of this run. So there's going to be other runs that you can make where you'll be able to make more money. Now, I don't know how fast the freelancer is inside of warp drive or quantum drive. I know that currently the 600i is the fastest ship in quantum jump but that's going to be a very important part of running cargo to make money is what's the maximum that you can carry and the quickest you could get from a to b i think sometimes you might find that a smaller ship that's twice as fast can make you more money and that's something that i'm going to have to test later on for this what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to find the fractured pieces that have the most of each element. So instead of having you watch me do this over and over again to try to scan them, let's move on to the next part of this video. So what happened was that Node didn't have a lot of things in it that I needed. So I moved over to this node over here, was able to crack it, and was able to make a lot more off of this one. But if you look, the elements are listed at 0.22%, 3.99%, and 0.59%. What I make from this run 
is going to be, let's, let's just say it's going to be far less than what I would have made had my laser worked on the first node that we tried to fracture. So I'm going to say this. Bugs are going to be frustrating for those of you that are not here to test an alpha of a game. No, these bugs are going to be the bane of your existence in many cases. So don't play the game if you're not ready to have a lot of things go poorly for you. There were times that I had my ship almost filled to the brim and I had a server crash and the server didn't remember where my last known location was. That was very bad for me because, well, I mean, it was very bad for me because it meant that not only did I have to claim my ship, wait seven minutes for the prospector to be returned to me, but I had to set out and go all through the process of finding the right node to mine again. Again, this can be a very frustrating process in the current iteration of the game. As the game becomes more stable with each update, these are problems that are going to go away. Also, as they update, the RNG of finding the right mining node, you're going to be able to reduce the time that it takes you to make the money that you need to make in the game to buy those ships. The whole game is about having vessels. The whole game is about playing with your friends. The whole game is about finding something in the universe that you want to do. And mining right now is something that works, and it's something that I'm going to play with. It may not be what I settle in on when the game goes live. For me, that will most likely be something more along the lines of exploration and maybe a little bit of mercenary work. Cargo running is something I also love to do. I've done it in Elite Dangerous, but right now I don't find it as fulfilling as I do mining. I know that that's going to be something that's going to be fixed with additions to the Moby Glass that allow you to see best prices in different ports so you can make a decision when you're, say, at Levski on what you want to move from A to B to make the highest profit. And those are all things that are going to be implemented in the game at later times. I took the liberty to fast forward a little bit to the last little bit of mineral that's being sucked into my hold. Now we're going to blast off this molten hot rock. I don't know why Ariel is so hot. If you do know, please post it in the comments section below. I really need to read up on the lore of this system. I mean, there seems to be a lot of ugliness going on on this rock over here. Why would it be so much hotter than the planet that it orbits? Unless it's tidally locked to the sun, which really would make little sense, right? Our moon is tidally locked to the Earth, so we always see the same side of it, but it still rotates, so it gets somewhat even heating across the whole, the whole satellite. I don't know what to call it. All right, so the next step is to get back home. And I want to talk about getting back home right now because it's going to be very important. When you're done mining, without refineries being placed in orbits around different planets, moons, or in Lagrange points, you really have to go and find a place to sell your wares. And I don't know if the mining facilities on the planets allow that. I looked for one of the terminals that allow you to sell your refined items, and I was unable to find them. What I did find is that the only place I'm able to sell it currently, and I'm hoping that you all will help me, is in Lorville, and it's at the administration building. And that means flying back to Hurston, entering the atmosphere, landing the ship, getting out of your ship, walking through the spaceport, getting on the train, and getting back to Levston. Is, would that be Levston Station? Wow, oh, I really am 
confused as to what that is, but back to the habitat area, and then walking over to the admin building. Now, because I don't want to make this a really long video, we're just going to fast forward through those things right now. It's now 10 minutes later, and we officially have wheels down in Lorville's Tisa spaceport. Now, that was a long time. When you think about it, 10 minutes, this whole run so far has taken me about an hour. And we even haven't made it back to where we can sell our wares. Here we are at a spaceport, and there's no place to purchase, sell. It's amazing. It, I mean, I'm baffled by that. Now, I know that they're trying to make it more realistic, that you'll have a business district, and you'll have a working district, and you'll have a housing district, and you'll have a spaceport district. But most ports, most airports are surrounded, most train stations are surrounded by delivery carriers, right? By carriers, by people that move product from A to B. If you look at FedEx, they build huge centers right next to an airport. And why wouldn't that be here? Why wouldn't it be something that was connected close by? So maybe I'm complaining too much because it really isn't too long to get from where we are now to where we've got to be. And now I am going to make you suffer the pain of having finally landed, finally got back to where you need to be and having to get to where you could sell your wares inside of Lorville. And again, if you know something I don't know, tell me now. So I am kind of impressed and a little bit confused as to where to go right now, <laughs> but I am kind of impressed with it regardless of the few bad comments that I've made. I'm pointing out things that are going to be fixed in the future, not things that are really bad right now. I think that when we're alpha testing a game, we really need to be a little bit open-minded and help the developers correct the issues that they can correct at the time that the game is being developed. The issues that we're seeing right now are probably not going to be fixed until they nail down the rest of object container streaming and the network fixes. Those are the most important elements to making Star Citizen a viable released product. And those will come over time. As soon as all the networking issues, as soon as object container streaming is both server and client side, as soon as the bind calling and all the other words and te you know, technology vocabulary that they use is fixed, the game should go into a much quicker development cycle. At this point, we're waiting on the pieces that make the game run efficiently on our system. And as soon as the networking elements are corrected, then they could start working on things like bringing us more and more and more content with each patch and fixing our graphics issues. When I say graphics issues, I'm talking about merging people, all sorts of wonderful things that happen when you're looking in different blocks and seeing through the world. All those things need to be fixed. What was I doing here? I was looking at some graphic issues. There was a lot of shimmering and I, I kept on seeing graphic anomalies pop up in different places. At this point, I was going to talk about 3.4 and how that business district was going to be unlocked, which will be that Levston station over there going over to the business district. Really can't wait for that. And there is the Metro Center. That's where we're going back to. All right, at some point in the very near future, we should have a train here. And there it is. Let's get on this train and find our way back. This one's going to go a little bit over 20 minutes today, folks. I am so sorry. But the main reason is that I want you to get an idea of the time it takes to do these different things. I was trying to wake that guy up. You're going to see him run off the train in just a bit. Because I frequently get stuck on the train. There he goes. And then wind up going back and forth because I start doing something. Uh, a lot of times I'm trying to work on schoolwork while I'm riding the train. And uh, sometimes I get 
stuck on an elevator going up and down. <laughs> Sometimes they get stuck on a train going back and forth. So in this situation, we got him off the train and he's on his way. And I'm typing to somebody right now and I'm talking about how I've been online for about two hours and change and haven't crashed. And I realized really quickly that I should knock wood because never, ever, ever tempt the RNG gods <laughs> into causing a service server crash for whatever reason. Now, I do need to make the comment of I am not trying to point out that travel times are too long at any point in this video. What I'm trying to do is point out what exactly you're going to go through when you're trying to make money in the game via mining. There is going to be travel associated with it that by the time 3.6 comes out is going to be reduced greatly because we'll have refineries where we could sell our wares or sell our extracted minerals and resources and make money that way. That will greatly reduce the time that it will take to do a mining run. What I was doing there is I was going to point out other trains that you can take. Those, of course, go to the work area. And then you could probably take those over to Levston. All right, so we're almost done. And when we are done, we're just going to talk about one last thing. All right, so we come through here and we go to our right. And there it is right in front of us. There it is. The admin building is right here. Just follow the yellow line and it yellow line will put you right in the wall. I think that's something that probably needs to be fixed and extended. Over on the left over here are your mining terminals. Just click, click, and we made 3,139 credits. All right, but that's not all. Now, Hephaestonite seems to have been the mineral that we made the most credits on. So I went and I did another run, and I'm about to show you what I got on that run. This next image is from a run that I made last night. You'll notice that Bexalite is something that brings you a lot more cash. So when you're looking for any of those nodes out there, be sure to capture as much Bexalite as you can. I made 18,000 on that second run. That was 21k for two runs. And if you ask me, that definitely deserves a drink. So I'm going to go ahead into the bar, have a drink, and close out. Thank you all for watching and continuing to support my channel. If you like the episode, please click the thumbs up button below. If you do decide to subscribe to the channel, be sure to click the notification button. It looks like a bell. It will make sure that you are notified of all my videos as they come out. And if you want to help out the channel with a bit more, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl. All right, folks, it looks like I'm going to be back for good now because school's coming to an end and Star Citizen is really moving forward at a rapid pace. Thank you all for watching and listening. And with that said, I'll try to get this guy's attention and have a beer or something. You all be safe now and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.